Okay. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen. Tell me, is my screen visible or not? Is my screen visible? Yes or no? Visible. Okay, very good. Fine. So I'll just quickly open the day two notes and then I'll continue with uh, today's discussion. Very important discussion today. Uh, please don't uh, miss it or uh, you know keep on noticing. So <clears throat> yesterday we discussed about the history of Java. I hope you went back and then just checked uh, whatever that I have uh, written here is uh, uh, factual or not. If not, you can do it uh, anyway. Uh, later, see here, you know, these are the different versions. And I have told, you know, I'll be, I might be using Java 11 or I might be using Java 17 also because uh, they, they have the uh, LTS support. So I think I've missed this uh, LTS support. So after that, we understood the difference between compiler and a interpreter. Compiler means it is a software which converts the high level language code into machine level language at once. Interpreter is a software which converts high level language to machine level language, but not at once. Rather, it will be doing line by line. That is what we understood. And later, we also learned which is faster, whether it is a compiler or an interpreter. You all came to a conclusion that interpreter is uh, slower when compared to compiler. I hope I am completely clear up until this. So. I'll just uh, continue with today's discussion. So notice I will create a new file. So in this uh, new file, maybe I will save it. So I have created day three folder. So I will just say day three. I'll rename it as day three. So in today's discussion, I'll be talking about, notice it, you, you should know this difference between loading and saving. They will ask you this question. Absolutely, you can expect this question in the interview. For this, uh, you should understand the system architecture. Okay. Now keep on noticing, keep on concentrating. See here. <clears throat> okay. I hope uh, you can see my screen, yes or no? Like I am sharing this uh, editor where I am able to, I'll, I'll be able to draw the diagrams. So can you see the screen? Can you see uh, that, part, that part of the screen? <clears throat> Tell me whether, uh, what is visible to you? I, I want you to please respond here. Okay, fine. <clears throat> it is visible to you. Notice it now. Now you have to understand the architecture, but uh, before that, notice it. I will try to write the processor. Maybe I will represent the processor like this. So maybe this is the processor. So this is how the processor would look like. Now, maybe I'll name it CPU or processor one and the same. Important, this is, uh, sir, is this useful or not? You will understand the usefulness of this. Definitely, this is important. So that is the reason I am covering this. Otherwise, I would not have covered this itself. Right. Now, this processor is there. The duty of the processor happens to be, you know, what will the processor do? If you give any instructions, the processor will understand the instructions. It will execute the instructions. But according to our yesterday's discussion, we came to a conclusion that the processor will understand either zero or one. That is zero or one. Apart from that, nothing will be understandable by the processor. Processor will not understand anything else. Okay. So what uh, they decided was, so let us, uh, you know, initially in the initial days, what they decided was, uh, whatever the files, whatever the files are there, the files, we will store it. Maybe I just represent the file like this. We shall store the files inside the processor all or instructions inside the processor. For example, uh, assume uh, we want to, uh, what do you say? Yesterday we understood that, uh, you know, it understands zeros and ones. 
so for some uh, operation maybe i want to uh, you know read some uh, document maybe the document would look like this maybe the document would be looking similar to this like this similar to this you know they decided okay we'll try to store information inside the processor directly but unfortunately you can never ever store any information inside the processor keep this in mind so you cannot store you cannot store any data like this you cannot be doing it so a big uh, cross mark for this because it won't support the processor will not allow this i hope i am completely clear okay sir next word next word they decided okay in inside this processor there will not be a lot of memory there, there will not be any memory to store the instructions so they came up with one device but uh, you know you have to keep this in mind the processors will be developed or the processor is built using semiconductor material it's a semiconductor technology so processor uses semiconductor technology that means uh, you know it is built using silicon so completely you know don't ask me whether it is completely silicon or not you know some parts 90% of it is built using silicon okay what is the advantage of semiconductors they are very fast they are very fast okay sir we are here to learn java why are you teaching us uh, the electronics see for anything the base is this you are writing the instructions the instructions are getting executed but how is it getting executed so fast you should know as a developer so these are the initial steps that you should be knowing that is the reason i am covering this keep on noticing it is not a waste of time or uh, you know useless it is absolutely useful keep on concentrating so they decided okay these things are not possible we cannot store the data inside the processor so they brought one device they brought one memory they brought one memory and then storage inside this uh, storage they started to uh, you know store the files they started to store the files so see here different files they used to store here inside this memory what is this memory later i will discuss about it when time comes i will discuss about it today but keep on concentrating your concentration is very important for now so later what happened you know all the instructions they started to store inside the device some storage device this storage device was a magnetic device it's a magnetic device so this device was built using magnetic technology magnetic technology okay next what sir next what they established one connection between this two devices these two devices they established the connection between the two devices like this they established the connection like this so what happened you know instructions now you need not store it inside the cpu or a processor you you can store all the instructions outside it so somehow you connect the two devices one is a microprocessor the second one is the storage device what is the storage device i'll talk about it these two should be connected through the wires you know these wires we technically call it as a bus it is called as a bus connection bus connection sir what is bus connection sir bus means bus is nothing but it is not the normal bus that you uh, you know travel and all bus connection means collection of wires that's it it's collection of wires okay they connected uh, the two devices using the bus connection now what happened was uh, this file you know somehow you know there is a channel to flow uh, towards the microprocessor so uh, somehow this file uh, slowly you know slowly you have to listen whatever i am trying to tell slowly it used to move 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 to the cpu cpu will immediately execute it and then it will say hey i am done with the execution you give me the next instruction again the second instruction whatever that i want to execute 
slowly from this device slowly it used to move it used to move it used to move it used to move lot of time it used to take go to the microprocessor immediately the processing will happen it will now say hey done with the processing hey give me the next instruction so why sir why are you trying to say why are you telling slowly slowly so many times because i'll tell you why because uh, tell me this device whatever that i am showing here uh, what type of device is it it is a magnetic device uh, what type of the device is processor it is a semiconductor device the types are mismatching the type of semiconductor and here the type is magnetic you know the types are not matching so the you know the communication is happening very slow the communication will be slow because the types of devices are different and then magnetic devices are very slow in nature that is how it is magnetic devices are very slow in nature semiconductor devices are very fast in nature so now what happened was i'll give you an analogy it is like this you know this is a ferrari car see whatever that you are seeing here this is like a ferrari this is like a ferrari car you are trying to connect you are trying to connect a bullock cart wheels to ferrari car that is what has happened here so when you connect or when you try to attach a bullock cart wheel to a ferrari car would you be able to achieve the performance of a ferrari absolutely not so the performance of the cpu was getting reduced because of this architecture the performance was very less during that time during that time you know people spent uh, millions of rupees on the cpu they spent lots and lots of money and then you know if it is not performing to its potential then absolutely what is the meaning what is the meaning absolutely they told people got fed up hey this device whatever that magnetic device that we took this device is uh, such a useless device it is very slow we will not use it anymore so we shall remove the connection from it let us not use that at all let us not use that device at all or later what they did they understood if a device is built using semiconductors then the device will be very fast the the device will be very very fast so what they did so what they did they came up with one device actually they invented one device which was also made up of which was also made up of semiconductor technology this is also semiconductor this is also semiconductor technology so here also semiconductor here also semiconductor if at all types are matching then absolutely the performance would be more the performance would be definitely more so what they did now they brought in the two devices or you know they 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 threw away this uh, device called as uh, you know magnetic device so maybe i'll just throw it away because it is not needed for me now so they they disconnected it anyway it is of no use they told so they disconnected it okay sir what next what next they brought in a new de device which was also made up of semiconductor now they <clears throat> connected both the devices they connected both the devices so instead of storing whatever the files that they stored earlier in the magnetic device they started to store it on this new semiconductor device even semiconductor device this is very costly both of uh, you know both the devices microprocessor is also costly now this new semiconductor device is also very costly but they told okay anyway we are spending money the only importance is the performance so they told okay even if it is costly it will be fine but the performance is what is important for us okay next what sir next what next what this file whatever that was there in this particular uh, storage you know very quickly it used to reach the microprocessor microprocessor very quickly it used to execute and then it was telling hey done done with the processing even this instruction very quickly it used to reach the microprocessor microprocessor would have uh, executed it very quickly and then it would have thrown it very quickly and then the execution is done but there was a problem with this memory if you ask me what is the first problem you know there were some restrictions or there were some conditions with this device they told 
if at all you want to use this semiconductor device to store the data, to store the files, then always the power connection should always be there. So it should be connected connected or it should be charged or you know power is needed all the time so sir what happens sir what happens if the power goes off for 2 seconds if the power goes off for 2 seconds or 5 seconds 2 seconds or 1 second or you know 500 millisecond as soon as the power is gone the entire data is gone. The entire data is completely lost. In other words, if at all you are using a device which is made out of semiconductor, I agree the performance is absolutely good, you know, high performance device and then processing is happening very fast. But for a second, if the power is gone, the entire data is lost. I hope I'm completely clear. I hope you understood the problem here. So, you know, as soon as the power is gone, the data is gone. So they now understood, hey, what is this? If one second of uh, power, if we lose, you know, we lose the entire data. Assume, you know, this scenario. <clears throat> what if I develop uh, some 20,000 lines of code and then 20,000 lines of code, assume I would have written like this. And for one second, if the power goes, all the 20,000 lines of code is lost. If all the 20,000 lines of code is lost, don't you think so? Effort goes in vain. So people started to, you know, think, okay, what is this? This memory is very useless. You know, if one second of power is lost, then the entire data is lost. Whatever the memory that I was talking about, that memory is called as volatile memory. Volatile memory. Volatile memory means, you know, as long as power exists, your data exists. If the power is gone, the data is gone. I hope I am completely clear. That is what the problem here. I hope you understood the problem with this uh, semiconductor device. Yes or no? Please do respond. Am I uh, going too fast? Am I going too fast? Is it uh, understandable? Yes or no? Okay, I continue. So what they decided was, okay, if we, you know, trust this uh, device or if we trust this memory, Again, uh, you know, it's very difficult for us. We want such memory. We want such memory where he, whether the power exists, whether the power is not existing, but we want the data to be available. Such memory we already used in the history or we already used in the past. So this memory they brought back in. Magnetic device they brought back in. Sir, magnetic device was very slow, sir. Very slow, I agree. but. But whenever you have the data, you store the data, the data was not getting lost. So whenever you store the data here, the data was persisting. So this memory was persistent memory. They will ask you this question in the interview. Can you differentiate between the persistent memory and volatile memory? This is an interview question. That is the reason I am covering it. So not of any, it's not a use, useless uh, uh, discussion. So interview question, can you differentiate between a persistent memory and volatile memory? Persistent memory means if at all the data is, sorry, if at all the power connection is removed, as whenever the power connection is removed, even though the power connection is removed, the data would still exist on the device. Such memory, we call it as persistent memory. Such memory where as long as the power exists, the data exists. As, as soon as the power is removed, as soon as the electricity connection is removed, the data is lost. Such memory, we call it as volatile memory. I hope I am completely clear with this. So what they did was, okay, if we use this magnetic device alone, then the performance would be, you know, worst because it is made up of a uh, magnetic device. My microprocessor is made up of, uh, you know, semiconductor device. Semiconductors and magnetic device, they are not same type. So hence the performance would be reduced. So if we use both the semiconductor devices, the performance is very high, you know, absolutely good. But unfortunately, if the power is gone, the data is gone. 
So what they decided was whatever that they threw away few years back, whatever that they threw away, hey, you are useless. They told useless to this poor fellow, but they 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 brought back this fellow back. They 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 brought him back, and then they told you know whatever the data that we want. we will write our data we will uh, we will store our files here whether the power connection is there whether the power connection is not there the data would be existing so they brought back in later what they did if they directly connect this to cpu absolutely useless it will not work so what they did they connected this magnetic device and semiconductor device oh magnetic device and semiconductor device okay sir what next ha huh, what next if at all i want to execute this file this file from magnetic device slowly you know it used to be loaded onto this uh, device semiconductor device any application if i want to execute if at all i want to run this file slowly it takes some time to load it onto this semiconductor device but once the data exists on the semiconductor device immediately it will go to cpu cpu will execute it and then it will say a hey, done immediately cpu will read cpu will execute and then it will throw away that is done in other words in other words now the performance of the processor is not getting affected performance of processor will get affected only if you supply the data slowly if you supply the data slowly he will be keep on waiting now he will not keep he will not be waiting rather as soon as the data existing on the semiconductor device immediately he will pick up he will execute and then he will say i am done with my work again the second instruction if you give immediately he will execute very quickly and then he will say hey, done with my work so you know now also the performance is high itself only thing is taking the data which is present in this magnetic device and uh, putting it onto the semiconductor device it might take some time i'm not telling no but once the execution starts it will not be delayed it will once the file is available here immediately cpu will be executing it i hope i am completely clear up until this point so you know whatever the magnetic device that i have written here we call this magnetic device as in reality we call it as secondary memory secondary memory or this word you would have heard about it it is also called as hard disk it is also called as hard disk in your computer you have hard disk second whatever the volatile memory that i spoke it is also called as primary memory it is also called as primary memory it is not hard disk rather we call it as ram random access memory so from today whenever i say memory whenever i say primary memory the thing that should hit your mind or you know the the thing that should be running at the back of your mind is whenever i say memory that means it is ram i hope i am completely clear with this so even today in all our computers there is one device called as hard disk there is one device called as ram there is one device called as ha now you tell me whenever you are using system for some reason you would have forgotten to put on your system for charging if the charge gets over and if the if the system shut down ha tell me whatever the data that you had in your computer will you lose it you would have you would have stored hundreds of films you would have stored hundreds of files you would have stored hundreds of programs you would have stored hundreds of uh, you know different different uh, things in your computer Uh, if if the if the power is gone ha uh, tell me the next time when you switch on the computer will will the data be existing or will the data be gone absolutely you would have the data ah uh, that means whatever the data that you stored that data was present in one device which was a magnetic device magnetic device is such a device which is non volatile in nature non volatile means even though whether the power exists or not the data would remain the data would keep on existing i hope i am completely clear ha huh, now i'll give you one analogy very simple analogy see this one simple example this is very important example now notice it i will create one uh, this one i'll create one document see here i you know this is a microsoft uh, word document i'll just create it so notice maybe this is the document 
I have one uh, blank document. Keep on, you have to keep on observing whatever that I am trying to say. I will keep on writing. I'll keep on writing here. Hello, how are you? How are you? Uh, whenever you are executing, whenever I'm try trying to type something on any file, whenever I try to open any file, uh, that means that file is getting executed. That means if the file has to get executed, that means the file does not exist on the hard disk rather that file is there on the RAM. Only if the file is there on the RAM, your CPU will be able to execute it. In other words, this browser, whatever I have opened, this browser is also running. If it is running me, this browser is running in my computer. If something has to run, it is the duty of the processor to execute it. If the processor has to execute that file or that particular instruction or that particular software should be present where? It should be present on the RAM. I hope I am completely clear. Your, your understanding, yes or no, please do respond. Your understanding or not? Your understanding this or not? <clears throat> Guys, I want you to respond. Yes or no, either yes or no. So, you know, this word, Microsoft Word, whatever that I am typing here, if this software is getting executed, that means this software is present on the RAM. If it is present on the RAM, just now I told you, this is RAM is such a device or a primary is for a primary memory is such a device. You know, as long as the power exists, you know, the data will exist. Uh, what if, uh, you know, what if for some reason this application gets closed? So it is asking, hey, do you want to save the changes? I will say no immediately. I cannot shut down my computer now because the class would be affected. So for some reason I have uh, closed it. Uh, now I closed it. Now, if you shut down also, the same thing will happen. I closed it uh, forcefully. Now tell me, whatever the data that I typed, where is it present? Can you find that data anywhere? Can you find that data anywhere? Absolutely, you cannot find that data. In other words, whatever that you execute, whenever you execute something, whenever you execute something, if at all, if it is getting executed, that means it is present on the RAM, for some reason, if it gets closed, if it gets closed, that means that data is lost. The data is lost. Such memory, we call it as volatile memory. All these days you are using, you know, all these days you are telling control yes, control yes. Uh, why should you do control yes? Why should you do control yes? Means whatever the data that was there on the RAM, whatever the data that is existing on the RAM, you take a copy of it and then you place it on your hard disk. That process is called as saving. I hope I am completely clear. I wanted to derive this, uh, you know, definition for you. That is the reason I did all this circus. So the process of taking the data that is existing on the RAM, if it exists on the RAM, it is not uh, permanent. So to make it permanent, I will take a copy of it and place it on the hard disk. That process is called as what? It is called as saving. I hope I am completely clear with this. So now the process of, you know, if the data exists on the hard disk, if the data is existing on the hard disk, if I take a copy of the data which is existing on the hard disk and place it on the RAM, if you now ask me what is this process called as, that process is called as loading. In other words, if I open a word and if I, if I open the word software, that means this Microsoft Office, I took it from my hard disk and I placed it on the RAM so that my microprocessor is executing. See, I am typing something, all this is fine. If I close it for some reason, if it gets closed, that means the data is lost. So take a copy before closing, take a copy of it and you have to store it on the hard disk. So what you will do, you will type whatever you want. It is there on the RAM. All these days, what you are doing, you are telling control, yes, oh, save as, and then desktop somewhere. I will just say, you know, test, test file, something like that. And then I will save it. Now, if I save it, if I save it, that means taking a copy that was there on the RAM and storing it onto the hard disk, we call it as 
saving. Sir, if we save, will it exist on the hard disk? You can notice here. You can notice here, test file, test file is there. Even if I shut down, even if I close my system, even if my system got turned off uh, immediately, but still the data would exist. I hope I am completely clear with this. So this is an interview question. So I'll just uh, write it here. See here, difference between loading and saving. Uh, now you tell me what is loading? What is loading? You tell me what will happen in case of loading? Loading. What will happen in case of loading? You have to answer. Taking a copy of data present on the hard disk and placing it on the RAM is called as loading. I hope I am completely clear. Saving. See? Taking a copy of data present on the RAM and saving it on the hard disk is called as saving. You should know this. This is very important. You know, the architecture is very important. Is it completely clear? You understood this or not? Whatever the example that I gave. Is it difficult for you to understand or did you get it? You have any doubts? You understood this or not? Please do respond. All of you, please do respond. Can I continue? Yes or no? You have to respond. Okay. See, why I am teaching all this? If you ask me, why I am teaching all this? Uh, because the, you know, I, I know the interview patterns, right? I know what type of questions that will be asked in the interview. These are the important types of questions you can expect in the interview because they are all fundamentals. If you say, hey, I am a C, uh, I am a software, uh, I am from the software background, I am from uh, CSC background, ISC background, they will ask you some basic questions like this, you know, with, with respect to computers. If you cannot answer some basic questions like this, then they will come to a conclusion that, hey, this fellow doesn't know basics, then will he be able to answer the programming questions? And then the chances of getting rejected from the interview would be high. So for that reason, I'm covering these type of questions because I know what can be asked in the interview. See, this is how the interview will be. So, you know, you have to listen to me for the next 15 minutes, very important discussion. So if you can understand or if you, whatever that I'm trying to tell, if you can get it, then it will be very helpful for you. Keep on concentrating, don't lose focus. See, whenever you have, whenever you have, or maybe I will not write it as a diagram, rather I will write it in the notes. So <clears throat> whenever you have technical interview or uh, interviews in the industry, interviews in the industry, this is how the industry uh, interviews will be conducted. What happens is uh, there will be certain set of rounds, multiple rounds will be there. See, I am not uh, doing out of syllabus or something like that. This is absolutely needed for you. That is why I am doing this. Keep on concentrating. If you don't want, you tell me, I can continue. But this is needed. So, see, the first round of interview will always be this. In the first round of interview, it will always be group discussion. This is where you know, 80% or 90% of the candidates will be sent out of the interview. They will be filtered from the interview. This is the round which is very important. Group discussion or you will be having uh, aptitude. So what is this, sir? Group discussion means uh, one topic will be given to you. 
that topic you know uh, you have to talk you know there will be five to six pe people will be sitting uh, together and all five of you should be talking about the topic so from this what they will conclude is whether you know your communication is good or not whether whatever the way you think is good or not all these things they'll be analyzing so the first round will be group discussion or aptitude so for group discussion definitely you would be needing soft skills you know how to you know talk you know how to greet all those things soft skills are needed and then for aptitude aptitude is very difficult very challenging uh, thing this is if you ask me what is aptitude in the aptitude you'll be asked questions on uh, timers you know train problem you know <coughs> distance etc lots and lots of you know problems will be asked here so what your college people will do i'll tell you see i am not against the college you know because i am also out of one college only but what college people will do is they will uh, take some 1000 uh, rupees or, or uh, 500 rupees from you and what they will do is uh, they will you know bring some people from uh, outside for 2 to 3 days they will conduct you know group discuss this training for 2 to 3 days 2 to 3 days maybe 6 hours a day 6 hours a day you know that that is how college will be doing in total maximum 6 hours means uh, it is in total 18 hours 18 hours uh, now trust me in 18 hours what they will do is are playing some games and all they'll be doing they'll be wasting 6 hours but in worst case 18 hours of this content absolutely it is useless you will not be learning anything all the types of problems what are the different types of problems you will not be learning at least at least you would need 50 60 hours of content 50 60 hours of content you need but unfortunately <clears throat> see here but we need 50 60 hours of content what to do what to do will not worry about it now but that is a problem that is one problem so if you don't do well in the interview in the first round only chances of getting see here chance of getting rejected 80% because if 100 people go for an interview 80 people will come out in the first round itself because of you know this problem aptitude problem if they they might not be knowing how to solve the aptitude problem they might not be knowing how to behave in the group discussion they might not be in a situation to speak many reasons will be there how to address this later we will come back to it second round will be if if at all you are applying for a core software development job so you know programming round technical programming round in this technical programming round what they will do is uh, they will give you one program program will be given and in 1.5 hours you need to write the code you need to write the solution so what are the different types of programs lots and lots of programs are there but you know what type of programs will be taught in this round nobody will tell you in your college also nobody will tell you you know you will not be getting to know what they will do they will bring some people from outside one or two days they will conduct some uh, workshops and then they will say hey you know whatever uh, that we could do everything we have done you know they would have taken money from you as well in many colleges they would take money but then they won't do the justice for the students so you know this this round also very important you know this round to clear it you know there are certain set of programs okay interview programs you know there are certain set of patterns are there around 150 plus programs are there one 150 plus programs are there if at all you prepare those 150 plus programs then chances of getting through this round would be high the more uh, you know you will be more confident majority of the concepts would be covered so you are you will be in a situation to cover it or you you know crack it assume you clear okay what to do your college will not be uh, giving this but you know what to do we will discuss about it later now <clears throat> third round will be technical round technical round in the technical round they will be asking the questions 
you know they'll be asking the questions on uh, java in in java you have core java 90% of the companies they will recruit for java only for freshers if they come to college if even if you go outside also 90% of them for freshers java would be the lifeline you know you do your research i am not lying or exaggerating that is how it is they will ask you questions on advanced uh, java they can ask you questions on jdbc they can ask you questions on uh, you know uh, collection api i know because i have taken interviews i have lot of experience uh, in this uh, you know i have lot of experience in this that is why i am telling so collections they will ask you questions on networking they will ask you questions on uh, uh, serialization deserialization and then they will ask you uh, questions on jsp servlets and then some uh, you know big companies they will ask you questions on springs hibernate and then <clears throat> boot spring boot so it is called as a spring boot fine <clears throat> so these are the different uh, topics they will take up and then uh, these are the topics they will be asking the questions on but uh, you know in your uh, college in the fourth sem java is there i have seen the syllabus you know in your java syllabus you know core java also whatever the core java content that are needed it is not there only some 10% of core java they have included and then uh, you know they talk whenever i have you know seen many teachers you know not uh, talking bad about them but they say hey whatever that uh, you know you have to learn uh, you know cyber security you have to learn mi al and all uh, or ml ai so so many things they will tell but then those things if you learn also as a fresher the opportunities will be very less these are the important things that they will be asking you in the interview in the technical round they'll be asking you the core java questions you know hey how to reverse a string you know what is the concept of inheritance can you talk about it you know can you tell what exactly is uh, exception handling see that is very important exceptions threads these are the very important concepts they will be asking questions on you know these these questions you will not be prepared 100% uh, nobody will tell you by the time you come out of engineering it will be already late so you know you would have to search for alternatives so nobody will tell you anything about all these things now what next sir even now for first round you cleared second round you cleared third round you cleared fourth round there are chances where you can get get uh, you know uh, rejected hr round in the hr round it is like a salary discussion round if your uh, communication is bad if at all your communication is bad your behavior is bad they will reject here also so in this round also you would need soft skills you would need soft skills so again by the time you reach uh, by the time you leave the college all these things are needed but 99% nothing will be there with you so you know by the time you leave out engineering by the time you come out of engineering it is like as if you you have learnt nothing that is how it is because whatever the content that you learnt in engineering would not be benefiting you for getting the first job i am 100% sure because that uh, machine learning artificial intelligence and all um, you know 10 years experience 15 years experience people only will not be you know getting the opportunities even if they get you know out of 1000 uh, opportunity you know in the entire world there will be some uh, you know 10000 opportunities in out of 10000 you know you assume how many people will be competing so what the what is the point that i am making is more number of opportunities if it exists more number of chances that you getting selected that is what you should think as a fresher once you gain experience later you can learn machine learning also you can learn artificial intelligence also you can learn cyber security also you can learn anything i hope i am clear with this okay sir now uh, you know we don't know aptitude you know we thought our college people will help us absolutely you know for this absolute 18 hours of content it is not at all you know sufficient you know i am not exaggerating guys whatever i am trying to tell is a fact 
I am trying to uh, enlighten you uh, with this. I am not uh, nothing else. You know, you believe it or not. Once you reach the seventh time, you will understand whatever uh, you know. I am telling whether it is uh, true or not later. Now, technical programming also. I told you, one fifty plus programs are there uh, where majority of the interview they'll be asking you that questions. What are the those programs? You don't know. Leave it. In technical round, forget about this. These things are not there in your syllabus. You would not have learned it. And then if soft skills uh, are not there, you know, if you don't clear this, forget of reaching the HR round. So in other words, if at all you have to get through a, you know, interview. Again, I forgot one more thing. In the technical round, again, you know, if at all the package is high, there are companies where, uh, you know, they'll visit your college with a 12 lakh package, 14 lakh package. They will definitely ask you the questions on uh, data structures and algorithms. Guys, without data structures and algorithms, you know, forget about, uh, you know, absolutely you will not become a better developer or, uh, you know, good developer without the concept of data structures and algorithms. This is very much needed. In other words, if at all you want to join a product-based company, see, I am not boasting, but I am telling you the fact. I am a software developer in a company. It's a product-based company. Product-based company, working in a product-based company, it is a different atmosphere altogether. Because I'll tell you what all benefits I have in this company. See, whatever the company that I am working in, I don't have the timing at all. Whenever I want, I can work. If at all, I am not available in the morning. If I sit in night also, nobody will ask you. If at all, I want to, uh, you know, take a break for two, two days for some reason. You need not uh, write an email. You need not apply using some portal. You need not uh, request your manager, nothing like that. All you need to do is just, hey, I'll not be available. I'll be working after two days. That's it. That is how the rules are in the product-based company. It is very flexible. But to get this flexibility, you know, your efforts are needed. Without your efforts, you cannot get a job in a product-based company. Product-based company, the main thing they would be expecting is the knowledge of data structures and algorithms. The more knowledge you have on data structures and algorithm, the more chances for you to get into product-based company. I hope I am clear. This is the fact. If you want your Google, hey, if at all I want to get into a company called Amazon, what all uh, things I need to learn? In a, a company called Amazon, there will be 10 rounds because I have seen my friends, right? One of my friend is in Amazon. He, he cleared 10 rounds and then he joined Amazon. That difficult it will be if at all you want to get into a product-based company. In order to get into a product-based company, these things are needed. Data structures and algorithms. Again, you might, you might say, sir, in third sem, data structures is there, sir. Uh, data structures is there in lab. You know, what you would have learned, you would have learned only array. You would have learned some uh, lists that is uh, linked list or something. <clears throat> linked list or something. Nothing much. Nothing much. Nothing much. So this is not the data structures actually that you need for product-based companies. You have AVL trees. You have, you know, a red black tree. Many things are there. Let's back tree. There is something called as algorithms, you know, distrust algorithm, all these, you know. You know, I'm not uh, scaring you, but I'm talking the facts or I'm speaking the facts. Without this, the chances of getting into product-based company would be very minimal. Very, very, very minimal. So, okay, sir, why are you telling all this? See, I don't want to waste my time or waste your time also. See, I'll come back to the, I'll, I'll come to the actual discussion now. If at all, um, you know, you're all, majority of you are here who, who are attending this are uh, third sem and fifth sem. You have two more years, two more years to get graduated. By the time, you know, by the time you reach the graduation stage, if you are well versed in, if you are, uh, you know, well versed in this, if you are well versed in uh, writing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of programs, and if you are well versed with these concepts of, uh, you know, core Java, advanced Java frameworks and, you know, data structures and algorithms, all these things, if you learn, and then, <clears throat> you know, if you have the necessary soft skills, nobody would stop or nobody would be stopping you 
from getting your dream job guys now nowadays for a fresher if at all you are uh, you know skilled you are skilled the amount they are paying is enormous that is how the market is you don't listen to others whatever they say hey still we are in third sem still we are in fourth sem why should we learn now let us learn when we reach seventh sem all those things you please uh, leave it aside you please have some uh, you know seriousness on your career so for your career point of view these are the important things that you would be needing so what we did what we did we did a market research as a study online team we did a market research so you know in that market research we understood these are the various rounds that will be there in this uh, these many various rounds what are challenges the students are facing because i told you i have trained more than 7000 students myself you know so i i know what uh, you know student community need if at all they have to come into the it industry it industry is very ruthless so you have knowledge, they will pay you whatever amount you want. If you don't have knowledge, they will not care also. So we, 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 we did a market research, we did all the analysis and then we, we concluded, okay, if at all for a student to get into a company, these many things are needed. So what we thought, okay, these many things are there. So we need to do some, um, you know, some, some help to the student community. And then we came up with one approach. So that is when we introduced this uh, full stack course, actually. That is when we introduced the full stack course. If you ask me, sir, what is there in the full stack course? See, notice this is what the uh, full stack course, this, this brochure, anywhere you would have uh, got it. See, we, we did the market research. You know, you go through this, I'll not be reading all these things. So we did the market research and then we understood, okay, in the industry, these are the things that they would be expecting from a student, from a fresher. If the fresher knows all these things, easily he can get into industry. So we we framed this syllabus as a you know study online team. We framed this syllabus. You know, we have included all the concepts which are basic and advanced also. Many advanced concepts we have, uh, you know, <clears throat> included here. You go through this. You you will have this with you. If you have not received it, you ask me. I will send it to you. You go through this. You you know check this. You know you compare it with any other institute. You might say, sir, I can learn Java easily or online, sir. YouTube, sir, in YouTube, Java full stack. You will not be getting the content more than forty hours. Forty hours. Forget about forty hours. You cannot learn core Java also. In 40 hours, you cannot learn Cold Java also. So what we did, we introduced all the concepts which, which are needed for a student perspective. And then we created this course. We created, see here, Core Java. In advanced Java, we created J2W and then Servlets, you know, and then, uh, you, you know, JSP, JSTL. What, what, all these, what are these, you know, you'll understand. Keep on concentrating. Five more minutes I'll take and then I'll stop it. Uh, later we introduced this uh, frameworks, you know, Hibernate framework, Spring framework, and then Maven framework. Git and GitHub also is necessary for a student. And then we thought, okay, if we do the theory, it is of no use. You know, whatever theoretically students have learned. So what we thought, we thought we planned of doing six real-time projects. See, if you know all these things, and if you put six real-time projects, and then if you do six real-time projects yourself, and you mention that in your resume, 100% chances of getting selected in the interview would be very high. I, I, I can promise you that. You know, you go and take this brochure and compare this brochure with anyone. And you tell a hey, whatever the brochure that you have done, you know, is useless. So I'll give the course uh, free of cost for you. I'll not be charging any amount. You know, if you say, if, if you have any other, uh, you know, people who are doing better content than us, I will do it for free. <clears throat> so I'll not take more than five minutes. Please keep on concentrating. I'll close it uh, soon today. So along with that, if we learn this, it is not sufficient. Students should know many other things. So what we did is we introduced, see here, core Java and advanced Java. You know, we, we concluded, you know, 150 hours of content is needed for it. So we decided, okay, minimum 150 hours for core Java and advanced Java, it is needed for the students. So we have designed in such a way that 150 hours of content for core Java, advanced Java, we have done. 
servlet cybernet and spring these are the frameworks now it is booming in the industry if you want to google it what is the what is booming in java which framework is booming it is the spring framework spring and spring boot is uh, the one so we have introduced that for 70 hours 70 hours of intense training on this now if you learn this it is not sufficient you'll not become a full stack developer so for becoming full stack developer you would need <clears throat> One second, uh, I'll just share my screen. Sorry, <clears throat> uh, I think you lost the screen. Is my screen visible? Uh, please uh, uh, let me know is my screen visible or not. I will just uh, close it in five minutes. Okay, cool. So for to become a full stack developer, the knowledge of SQL is needed. That is SQL for database handling is needed. So if we introduce the 30 hours of content for uh, SQL. Later, you know, to become a full stack developer, he would need front end technologies, HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, these things we included. You know, if you want, uh, you know, if you if you are interested, I will teach you JavaScript also because I am, uh, I am, uh, you know, experienced in JavaScript as well. If time persists, I would include JavaScript also inside this. So for the, that 30 hours. Now, Java programming, again, I told you, Java programming, you know, 150 programs, you know, it is not 30 hours, actually, it will be more than uh, 50, 60 hours of content. So, you know, this is some um, 30 or 40 programs, but later we decided, you know, we should be doing at least 100 or 120 programs for you. So it would take around 60 hours of content or 50 hours minimum content later. You know, if at all you are interested to join the product-based company, to join the product-based companies, you would need the knowledge of data structures and algorithms. That too in Java that I'll be teaching. Data structures, algorithm also, it is roughly 30 hours we have mentioned. It will get extended to 40 hours. 35 to 40 hours it will be getting extended to. Later, uh, you know, what all interview questions that I'll be asking in data structures, interview questions that I'll be asking in the programming, all these things, we have it with us. Uh, aptitude, you know, I told you, 60 hour content, we already have it. You know, if we feel we need more, we would be increasing this as well. And then for uh, attending the interviews, first thing is uh, resume building. You should have a proper resume. You should know how to build a resume. Second, you know, placement preparation, you know, what all things that you should have or you should know before you attend the placement. For that also, we have dedicated 20 hours. Mock interviews will be conducted. That is, as, in, as an interviewer, I myself will be conducting the mock interviews on the technical thing. Sir, will you conduct mock interviews on aptitude and all? Aptitude and all, I'll not be doing because uh, I'll be doing all these things apart from, see, Java, you know, core Java, advanced Java, framework, SQL, HTML, CSS, bootstrap, programming also I will do, data structures also I will do. This resume building and then these two things will be covered by different set of trainers. But then they are also, uh, you know, specialists in this domain. So we have uh, we have a team of that. So in in other words, in order to tackle the interview, in order to get placed, whatever things are needed, we have introduced here. Now you might feel, sir, we are third sem, we are fifth sem. Why would we need placements now? See, you are in third sem, you are in fifth sem. You know, you don't know how quickly the time goes. You know, by the time, you know, you know, you reach the final year, you would be in immense pressure from many, many people, you know, your family, friends and all. At that point of time, if you start learning this, you would take at least six months for it. So by the time, you know, you would be coming out of eighth semester. If you come out of eighth semester, you know, there will be ocean, you know, people, lots and lots of job seekers will be there. Thousands of job seekers will be there. You may have to compete with thousands of them. If you are intelligent enough, if you prepare all these things, if you prepare on all these things, by the time you reach 7th sem, your college will start placements on 7th semester. You will get two semester time to get placed. If you have 20 companies in that 20 companies, at least you'll be you know, clearing three to four companies. I, I can write and give it to you. That is how confident I am on this content. So. That is why I would request you to go through this. Uh, I would like, uh, you know, I would request you to go through this content and then uh, you may have to uh, think uh, on the lines, you know, you know, whether you want to do it or not, 
it, it is up to you. I'm not forcing you to join this or something like that. It is up to you, right? It is up to you. You want to take it, you take it. If you don't want to take it, I, I don't force you. But if you are intelligent enough, if, uh, you know, if somebody told me this when I was in third semester or fifth semester, definitely I would have gone with this content because, you know, definitely, you know, this is a win-win situation for you. You know, daily one hour time you have to spend eight to nine, maximum eight to nine thirty. And then during your exams, you know, the holidays will be given, you know, you will not be bothering about, uh, you know, or will not be bothering you that, you know, even though you have exam, you have to attend. No, nobody will tell you during exam time, you will be given the leave, whatever support you want on the pro preparation. We will give lots and lots of assignments will be given projects you yourself will be doing. So I, I hope uh, this is the right time for you to take it up because Nowadays, second PU students have uh, taken, I have seen many students from second PU started uh, learning the programming language, Java, Python and all. So that, you know, in four years time in engineering, they will be creating projects and later, they, you know, they will be getting huge package, you know, 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs package. So this is the right time you decide. So, you know, for, you know, today, the third day of demo class is done. So from next week onwards, uh, it will not be free of cost. So it is up to you to pay the fees and then uh, join the uh, course. If at all you are interested, you can join the course. If at all you want to know, you know, how to pay the fees and all, uh, this is the fee structure. So see, till now, I have not spoken anything about the course or, you know, entire content I discussed for the two days. But this information, you need it. That is why I am giving you. So if at all you want to opt only Java full stack, so in Java full stack, it will be Java. That is core Java, advanced Java, frameworks. So frameworks, that is maybe I'll show it in the browser. Uh, have some patience, guys. Five minutes, I'll close it. Sorry. See here, these are the contents. So core Java, entire core Java will be given to you. Entire uh, this advanced Java will be given to you entire frameworks that is hibernate spring maven github and six real time projects it will be given to you till here but you know if at all you want to opt only for java if at all you want to learn only java then uh, that is the fees now if at all <clears throat> just give me one minute i'm uh, yeah. yeah sorry where is it yeah if at all you want to take only java full stack and then maybe plus it's not six projects. I will also, you know, I will try to do eight projects. Majority of the projects I will try to do because, you know, more number of projects, more number of content that you will be getting. So if at all you want to opt for Java full stack, if you want to learn data structures, algorithms and interview questions of data structures, algorithms, if at all you also want to learn programming, if at all you want to learn aptitude, placement preparation kit, all these things, if you want along with Java full stack, we are charging 15K. So, you know, if you want, you can, uh, you know, talk to Sandesh, you know, his number is given here. You can talk to Sandesh and then, uh, you, you know, you if you don't have 10, 15K, I would suggest if I was in your situation, I would be opting for all these things because Core, you know, this uh, Java full stack, anyway, you know, you can, uh, you know, can learn. But everything, data structures, programming, aptitude, placement at one place, at one place, if you are getting for, you know, this amount, definitely it is worth it. Guys, I don't want to compare it. If you want, you can compare it. You know, many other uh, portals are there for courses. They will charge you more than for, for this Alone, Java full stack alone, you know, many websites are charging, uh, you know, 75,000 to 1 lakh. You can compare. I'm not, uh, you know, showing that. It is up to you to do your research. If somebody is giving all these things at this price, you know, then, you know, you go and join them. I will not, uh, you know, I don't have any words. I, I have seen it. Nobody are doing it for this particular amount and that to this content and at this at this level training, nobody will be doing it. That is the confidence that we have in study online. So it is up to you. But I would suggest you to go for this particular course. 
you know you can talk to sandesh whether uh, you know he can uh, you know reduce 11k or something he might uh, help you out with that i am not sure but you know 15k see four years of engineering you would have spent you know around 5 6 lakhs but end of engineering what you are earning what you are getting you will not be getting anything apart from that degree certificate but in order to get into a company the main information whatever that you want everything we are covering for 15k i think uh, you know you should think in such a way that this is the last 15000 that i am taking from my parents so that you know from this i will take full advantage of this course and then i will do all the projects and assignments and i will attend the placement and then i will start earning and i'll run the family that is the confidence that you should have and you will have after attending this so i am not uh, talking some rubbish this is the factual thing that i am talking so i want you to think properly i want you to take things seriously from now okay okay sir how to pay the fees see for today uh, is the last date of the demo class you can talk to sandesh uh, you can call this number sandesh account uh, details are there you can take a screenshot of it i will send it to you in the chat see here the same thing i will put it in the chat uh you can copy it everyone has to copy this take a screenshot of it please i i would like to take i would like you people to take a screenshot of this this is needed uh so you know the course if at all you want to continue from monday um you know i would suggest you to take up this if you say no no i don't want all these things i want only java full stack go ahead you can uh, pay 10k and learn if you say no no sir uh, you know is there any option of uh, you know paying uh, amounts in multiple uh, phases that is 5k i will pay now later i'll be paying uh, the remaining amount you can talk to sandesh regarding that you know you can call this number sandesh will assist you with it he he will give you more information regarding uh, the uh, the payment in uh, different intervals i hope i am completely clear so with this i would like to conclude today's discussion of course you know i i did the content for half an hour today and uh, the next 30 minutes i took it to explain this but unfortunately whatever that i discussed this is important for you so you don't think i am wasting time i wasted time you know i tried to enlighten you with uh, this you know the reality the reality is very hard if you put in efforts and then if you learn these things as early as possible more more chances for you to get cleared uh, clearing the interview i hope i am completely clear so you know is it completely clear you have any doubts if you want to ask please uh, ask in the chat box i would be very happy to assist you you have any doubts please uh, post it in the chat box any doubts guys you know i am not forcing you but uh, you know this is like it will definitely help you out i am uh, uh, 100% sure it will help you out java any anything and everything with java i will be handling it uh, aptitude and all there is another trainer who is very qualified if he is not qualified we will not be hiring him that is how the confidence we have that is the reality so you know you can any other doubt you have you can talk to mr sandesh you can call this number and then uh, you can get the doubts clarified Uh, regarding the payments and admissions so try to make the admissions by the weekend i know this is a uh, year end and then you will be having some other plans your parents will be having some plans so you know talk to your parents you can tell them that whatever the content that you have seen show them this content and show show your textbook content so you tell them you know this would be the last amount of money that will be taking later you know whatever the money that uh, we have taken we will earn money and then give it to you that is the confidence you should give it to your parents so they have done lot for you so it is your time to take this up and uh, pay them back with this i would uh, uh, you know close today's discussion you have anything you can stay on the call otherwise you know we can meet on monday i hope uh, you understood whatever i told please uh, you know pay the fee Oh, attendance! Very good. Uh, the attendance. I will. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of it. Give me one minute. Thank you for reminding. Uh, you know, uh, you would be receiving the certificate anyway for uh, participation. Those who have attended uh, the class regularly, so you would be receiving the participation certificate. 
one second. I will take the screenshot of this <clears throat> so that, uh, you know, I can, one second. Uh, until I take up the attendance, please wait. <clears throat> Give me one minute, guys. Sorry, uh, I'm taking the screenshot of this. <clears throat> yep. Yep, I have taken the screenshot. You can, if you want, you can observe this. Maybe I will desktop inside Java day three. attendance you can see everyone i have taken the attendance of everyone i will mark it <clears throat> uh, python class certificate still we haven't received please send as soon as possible it will be very helpful okay i hope you spoke to sandesh uh, please call to this number i have given the number also call to this number he would definitely pick up you pick up the call and then he would uh, assist you with the certificate he will definitely give it to you for you also for you people also the certificates will be sent Okay. Uh, you have any doubts? If you have any doubts, please do uh, ask me. Otherwise, uh, we'll meet on Monday, hopefully. I would expect you to uh, continue. Uh, that would be the expectation. But then it is up to you. You know, I am hoping that uh, whatever that you learned in three days, you know, will benefit you at least uh, some point of time, at some point of time. But uh, if you continue, definitely you would get uh, a lot of benefits. That is what I can say. Later, it's up to you whether you want to continue or not. I will not force you, but uh, if you join, it would be definitely helpful for you. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you all. Have a great day. You know, God bless you all. I don't know whether we'll be meeting Monday or not. You know, it's up to you whether you, if you join, we'll definitely meet. If not, then, you know, I think uh, it's, you know, that's why I'm telling you all the very best, everyone. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you. Good night.